I've been deep diving into the world of dupes. People who buy dupes know it's not the real deal, but they buy it anyway. I did a makeup test with dupe makeup on one side of my face and got viewers to guess the difference. Spoiler alert, they mostly couldn't tell. I also sent my producer Luo'er to China for an inside look into the business of dupes. In this episode, I find out how factories can balance quality and low prices. And I test more dupes like this hairdryer. And can you guess what I'm wearing? It's a dupe of a famous activewear brand. I'm going to find out just how well they match up to the originals. These are the dupes my producer has sent back from China. Both the top and the tights are a whopping 90% cheaper than the originals. I will be stress testing the dupe activewear outfit for a week. To evaluate them on comfort, function, and durability. Which also means I'll be washing them daily. All to decide if they really are value for money. Meanwhile, I'm in China. Here, clothing is the most popular dupe category by far based on people we spoke to. But with so many types of clothing trending online, how do businesses choose what to make and sell? To find out, I'm at a 250,000 square feet wholesale complex in Hangzhou. My guide for the day Live streamer Lai Ting, who sells dupe clothing on his channel. Lighting frequent stores here to check out trending dupes. So Zhiyo知道的人才懂這是一個平替吧。Lighting sources items directly from factories that produce trending products and then sells them online via his live stream channel. Thank you. 我们这个行业还有的比较高的可能会三倍我们希望每一场比如说可以卖个一两千件两三千件这是我们都想要的想要买平替的这种粉丝可能在中国可能有大几百万吧
，但是我未来可能这个行业可能慢慢也会比较卷，因为做的人多嘛。Meanwhile, in Singapore, I'm going to meet someone who can help me with these dupe headphones. Hello. Hi. Delfina Utomo monitors and reviews products for popular online lifestyle magazine Eight Days, including Dupe Electronics. All right, Delfina, I've brought something for you. Thanks. Oh, that's like really popular on Amazon and Shopee. Mm -hmm. And I have what you would say is the original of that. This one. Ah, all right. Let's test them out. Yeah. For headphones specifically, what should I be looking at? For me, the fit is very important. Oh, why don't you have a feel? So automatically, what stands out is the weight. This one feels a lot lighter, whereas this one feels like there's a bit more. Weight yeah, me. yeah, most sturdy, I think. And what about the audio quality? Ooh, my favorite part. Okay, let's try it on. Okay. When I test headphones, I always start with like pop sounds and EDM sounds because that's like what most people listen to. This is almost like a silent disco, right? Okay, let's go full volume now. The sound is so clear. It's yeah. so crisp, and yeah. I can almost hear. Every single part of yeah, the, uh, exactly. the track, yeah. Oh, yeah. So the audio quality right now, when you've increased the volume, is really sharp. Yeah. And I actually can hear a bit of your music. So if I'm sitting next to you on the train, yeah. I know your whole <laughs> listening <me>. playlist. <laughs> okay, so that's audio quality. How important are extra features? Let's see how it blocks out external sound. Okay, I'm going to listen to the song, and yep. you're going to play me some noise. I only hear the song now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't hear, hear anything. anything yes. Yeah. I don't hear you. I don't hear the noise. <laughs> This is really fun. Okay. Ready. Ready. Okay. Okay. Let's try something. I can hear the construction noise. <laughs> Who is hacking? It is quite distracting. So okay, when you turn the volume up, I couldn't quite hear the construction noise. But when the song dips, and then, then I can it, definitely yeah. hear it. Whereas for the original, I couldn't yeah. hear a thing. So the other thing I look at is Bluetooth connectivity. Whether it stays connected when I walk around the house. Singapore houses are small, it's not like I ever mentioned. So when I go to the toilet or when I go to the kitchen from my study, it's still connected. But for some, it gets crackly. It didn't crack. It didn't cut. It was just consistent. Didn't cut out at yeah. all. It's decent. Yeah, yeah, I would say like it's a decent dupe. If you are someone who wouldn't want to spend more than three hundred dollars on headphones, like definitely I would go for a dupe. For this one, you can get it for around sixty. And the dupe does the bare minimum, which is for your regular commute listening yeah. to music. If you're an audiophile, then yeah, go for the original. Yeah. But if you just need something for regular tunes, sixty I mean, dollars yeah. take my money. <laughs> <laughs> And I put these hair dryers to the test. It does feel a little hot right now. So for the top, it actually held up okay for the tight. As I was working out and as I was sweating more and more, it felt like it was just sticking to my skin. I'm just about to leave for my workout, and then I noticed my tights. There's a little bit of thread that's come out and a little bit of damage. I've washed it three times now.
After a good workout, the best indulgence is to get my hair washed by someone else. Zikshi has been a hairstylist for 15 years. He's constantly testing out new hair dryers on the market. Zik will be drying and styling my hair with the dupe hair dryer and again with the original. Both hair dryers will be on the same settings. High heat to dry and style, then cool air to set. It does feel a little hot right now. I don't feel the heat from... Oh, you don't feel the, it as much? Yeah. I was very surprised at the stark difference because for the benefit of everyone, I was hoping the dupe won because it's more cost-effective. But in the end, the result showed that the original won by a fair bit. The dupe gave a lot more frizz, whereas for the original, the hair was shinier and significantly smoother. So for heat control, when I was using the dupe, I found it harder to manage in the sense that the heat was inconsistent. In my experience, I felt like this did not match up to a fair bit of hair dryers that I have tried as compared to the original and other like bigger brands out there. The dupe dried my hair faster compared to the original by about 5 minutes. But my hair turned out frizzier. So in this matchup, we have a clear winner. Meanwhile in China, my producer Luo e has been given unprecedented access inside factories that produce all kinds of dupes. After weeks of contacting various people, I've managed to land myself a spot on what's called a business strategy tour. I'm one of about 50 people who have signed up for this tour. It links aspiring businesses with factories that manufacture various kinds of products, including dupes. I want to know how these factories operate within the whole dupe business ecosystem. Our first stop, a jewellery factory. Then, a household goods factory. This干发帽卖价应该在二十块一个有一个大品牌也有制造这个可是价钱有四倍对吧是的那差别是在哪里呢你看一下你可以感受一下这个产品啊这个面料比一般的我们的干发面料至少厚了一倍以上啊这个原
will she change her mind when she gets to see, touch and use these? Looking at it in real life, I'm pleasantly surprised by its quality despite its low price point. For me, value is also determined by longevity, such as whether it'll tarnish or break within a short period of time. So, I'm going to wear this 24-7 over the next week, including in the shower, to see how it holds up. And I'm about to find out how one particular kind of dupe could be better than the original. This one smells slightly stronger. Dupes do operate in a grey area, especially when the products are almost a replica of the original. Uniqlo, for example, is suing Shein for copying its very popular banana bag that went viral on social media for its large capacity. The case is still pending. Because dupes are so widely available, it's hard to quantify losses suffered by the original brands. So companies are adjusting their business strategy. Olaplex, a popular hair product, created their own dupe called Oladupe. It was purely a marketing campaign to generate buzz to say that their product is irreplaceable. And activewear brand Lululemon? Well, they held an event in the US where customers could swap their dupe tights with the original. On the flip side, there are businesses who have evolved to ride on the growing popularity of dupes. Josh Frost started his business two years ago. He takes just three weeks to recreate any scent. Why start a business essentially recreating well-known perfumes? Personal story, I wasn't able to afford uh, much and perfumes being one of them. So that's where it started. I used to bartend. So just like a cocktail, we build a perfume. Mm -hmm. So we have some bases here, like vanilla, some musks here, some woods here, florals, some spices, pepper. So you would build from bottom up. And there's your perfume. How do you ensure that you don't get tangled in legal issues with brands? That's a great question. So uh, in the world of intellectual property, we have to be considerate for brands' names, mm -hmm. titles, bottle design, the shape, the colors, the models. As long as we stay away from that, do not deceive the consumer, and then you're okay. And what is the difference between your dupes and the OG, for example? So what I'm gonna do here is spray the comparison uh -huh. and ours, okay. and you can tell the difference. All right. Okay, so can I get you to turn around? Okay, you can turn around. All right, Let's see. Okay, I'm going to go with this one. Yes. This is yours. Yes. Yes! <laughs> I win! I think I could tell which one's yours because this one is slightly stronger. Yep, so what we've done is we've minimized the fillers and made it stronger. So some mainstream brands will use more filler, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. So if you would like that fresher, lighter smell at about 4% concentration, then the mainstream brands would be suited for you. If you like the perfume to last maybe for eight hours, out in the day, hot sun, then ours would be better suited for you. Would you say that the business of dupes is gaining acceptance? I'd say people are definitely more focused on quality and affordability in uh, tough times now. Since starting in June 2022, we've sold about 52,000 bottles um, and we're looking to expand into three retail stores by the end of this year. While Josh's perfume business is clearly doing well, is it really possible for all dupe businesses to thrive? Wang Yang has 12 years of marketing experience working at e-commerce giants in China, from Alibaba to Jingdong. 
She's also the brains behind the factory tour I went for earlier. 就跟我讲一下吧，为什么你要开发商业留学？它的这个底层啊，其实还是平替上的一个概念和一个趋势。作为一些商家来讲，它的一个机会点是什么？它就要去找到这些品质保障的这样的品。那去哪儿找？以及除了工厂之外呢，还有很多的这种供应链啊、批发商啊等等。那我觉得这个部分呢，其实可以帮助到大家，能够让大家就是用最短的时间啊，高效可以能拿到结果。市场前景我还是比较看好的。现在大家所有的这个趋势和这个消费的这个消费的趋势啊，其实都是往这个平替的概念去转。就是你今天看我家，你也会发现我有一些品呢是已经开始在平替了。平替公司对你而言，跟那些大牌标的公司能站在一起吗？不一样。不一样的一个原因很简单啊，是一个品牌的话，注重一些商品的一些品质啊，啊一些设计之外啊，其实呃品牌呢，它还有很多的一些这种营销的一些属性在里面的。但是对于只是否生产、平替它加工、制造这样子的一些行业，那它可能绅士啊，或者是一些声音啊，可能就没有那么多。我们可能对平替的包容量，嗯，会比较大吧。就是说，如果价钱低。你那个不会的，平替的背后，它就是同样的品质，价格更低呀、啊，对吧？我的价格下来了，你的质量也给我下来了，那我就是等于买了一个残次品嘛，对吧？嗯。It's day seven, and I'm done stress testing my dupe activewear. In terms of comfort, these leggings are not as breathable as the originals. Function-wise, they do tend to bunch up when I'm doing high-intensity workouts. Wearing them during low-intensity workouts will fine, though. Finally, color is still holding strong, but the threads, not so much. So, will you give up your branded tights? No, I don't mind trying dupes to expand my wardrobe. Just maybe not these. There are some dupes that I wouldn't mind buying, like some of the makeup, the headphones. The sound quality is good enough for me, and my bracelet. It's still holding up, even after a week in the shower. Yeah. I guess if you don't mind buying non-branded products that are cheaper and of somewhat similar quality, then why not? If you choose the right dupe, then your cost savings can be really high. 